hands up. I'm not going to tell you again. Right. Turn around. Initiating content. The Secrets of Area 51 Number 5. Secrecy Yields Conspiracy Many of the conspiracy theories that surround Area 51 are the result of the government's need to keep the base secret. The alleged UFO may have been just a nuclear reconnaissance balloon, but the Air Force didn't want the public to know much about their spy capabilities either. Many of the alleged UFO sightings around the base were known by Air Force officials to be U-2 test flights, which flummoxed hobby and commercial pilots because they flew so high above regular air traffic, according to declassified CIA history. Air Force officials obfuscated what was going on with statements about natural phenomena and high-altitude weather research. Number 4. Captured Aircraft and Other Secrets there may be no good evidence that the military captured and studied UFOs at Area 51, but files declassified in 2013 revealed that the U.S. did test secretly obtained Soviet MiG fighters during the Cold War of the 1970s and 1980s. These secretive projects were dubbed, Have Donut, Have Drill and Have Ferry. Those same documents were the ones that revealed that Area 51, or Groom Lake, for those who prefer the official terminology, was a testing site for the Lockheed A-12 Oxcott and the D-21 tag board. They also revealed that the F-117 Nighthawk, a stealth attack aircraft made by Lockheed, was tested at Area 51. That craft started operating in 1981 but was kept secret from the public until 1988. Nighthawks were flown in the Gulf War and during the war in Yugoslavia as well as in the Iraq War. Number 3. The Aurora Project. Aurora was a rumored 1980s American spy plane, the existence of which has never been definitively proved. There is absolutely no substantial evidence that it was ever built or flown. The U.S. government has consistently denied such an aircraft was ever built. But high-tech propulsion systems have been proposed for a while as an explanation for mysterious unexplained gaps in military budgets and also ear-shattering sonic booms. In February 1994, Area 51 enthusiast Chuck Clark claimed to have filmed the Aurora taking off from the Groom Lake facility. His footage is not recognized by anyone in a position of authority, but the 2013 official report on Area 51 revealed it was the location of the testing of U-2 spy planes for surveillance during the Cold War as part of the U.S. spy program. Details revealed U-2 missions over the Soviet Union and even Britain's participation in the testing project. Once the U-2 began flying at above 60,000 feet, an unexpected side effect was an increasing number of UFO sighting reports. Sightings occurred most often during early evening hours, when airline pilots flying west saw the U-2's silver wings reflect the setting sun, giving the aircraft a fiery appearance. Number 2. Area 51's neighbors break their silence. The Sheehan family have owned land next to the infamous Area 51 site for 130 years but, until now, have never spoken publicly. The family have broken their silence on what it has been like to own property near the mysterious Area 51 after rejecting a multi-million dollar offer from the U.S. Air Force for their land. The property includes Groom Mine, which the family have mined for silver, lead, copper, zinc and gold claiming that their land has been bombed and showered with radioactive fallout, the family are demanding compensation from the Air Force and Department of Energy. The family also say that guards have held them at gunpoint. Danny Sheehan told the Las Vegas Review-Journal, It seems like machine guns solve anything on the property out there. That's not the American way. Another family member, Dan Sheehan, told Las Vegas Now. First, we really didn't want to come public, but the Air Force has forced us into it. 
We want them to know what they have done over the last 60 years to our family is not acceptable. The Air Force is reportedly threatening to make a compulsory purchase of the land if the family does not agree to their $3.4 million offer. In a statement, the Nellis Air Force Base said the action was necessary because the property's location inside the Nevada Test and Training Range and the increasing security demands have made it impossible for the Air Force to test and train securely and safely while civilians are present. Number 1. Here's what you'll face when you try to invade Area 51. First, let me give you a word of warning, the trip will be difficult and conditions not ideal. You will be arrested and sent to federal prison, or possibly shot all to see things that may not actually exist. Still wanna go? Okay. The best place to start your federal incarceration is at the Area 51 Visitors Center, approximately 1 hour and 22 minutes west of Vegas. The Visitors Center was owned by Nevada brothel magnate Dennis Hoff and includes a mini-mart, picnic areas, the alien cat house, and an ET-themed brothel. Once you depart from the Visitors Center it's an hour and 52 minute drive north to Area 51, and there are two routes to choose from. The first via Cane Spring Road, or I-95 and then the Mercury Highway. Both merge at Sugar Bunker, which is presumably where the government stores the alien food pellets. Then proceed north through what looks like a moonscape of gigantic craters. These are the remnants of U.S. nuclear weapons tests and are closed to the public for a very good reason, and not because neither AT&T nor Verizon report cell phone coverage there. At a certain point, you'll be stopped, pulled by base security. The main security force, known over the years as the Camo Dudes, are civilian contractors that patrol the base perimeter wearing camouflage uniforms and driving pickup trucks. The Camo Dudes are generally known to UFO watchers as a humorless lot that take their job very seriously. They are quite well armed, and in one case in 2016 drew their firearms on a pair of motorcyclists. It has also been alleged for years that Area 51 is ringed with sensors, including seismic intrusion devices designed to detect the rumble of vehicles, and that explains how the camo dudes often respond so quickly to trespassers. Traditionally, trespassers at Area 51 can expect to be detained by the camo dudes for hours on end until a Lincoln County Sheriff arrives on the scene, at which time they are issued a $750 ticket for trespassing. That's a relatively tame response, the base is also ringed with signs citing the Internal Security Act of 1950, and stating, use of deadly force authorized. Deadly force is authorized even for a misdemeanor offense. Maybe that's a bit unusual, but then again, this is Area 51 we're talking about. A smart defendant in federal court could argue that there is no mention of alien hospitality suites in the Internal Security Act, forcing the government to drop the charges or produce the aliens. Finally, the U.S. Air Force told USA Today that the Nevada Test and Training Range, of which Area 51 is a part, is an area where the Air Force tests and trains combat aircraft. Any attempt to illegally access military installations or military training areas is dangerous. The statement is weirdly ominous, leaving it ambiguous what the source of the danger is. Rattlesnakes. Falling rocks. Accidental bombings. It doesn't say. It's probably best to never find out. Once you're inside the base, there's no telling what you might find. Most likely, you'd find a variety of secret test aircraft, including F-117A Nighthawk stealth fighters, recently seen sporting, aggressor camouflage, the legendary and elusive Aurora Mach 6 spy plane, or a Russian fighter jet owned and operated by the U.S. government dogfighting with American planes. And maybe aliens and their UFOs. Bigfoot, too. That was all the information we have available on the topic. We hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe for more interesting content. Thank you for choosing Artificial Archives and we hope you have a wonderful day.